Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I have another block for you. This one is called Indian Puzzle and here is my sample block which I think turned out really nice. Um, I would call this one an intermediate level because there's a lot of pieces and a lot of points to match but other than that um, it isn't that difficult to put together. We have half square triangles flying geese units and a square and a square unit. So the same units we've been using for quite a while now, um, just in a different arrangement. So I hope you'll stay with me and I'll show you how to make the Indian puzzle block. Here are the fabrics you're going to need to make the Indian puzzle block. For A, you're going to need one four and a half inch square. For B, you'll need four three inch squares. C is four two and a half inch squares. D is four two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. E is eight two and a half inch squares. F is four two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. G is four three inch squares. H is eight two and a half inch squares. And I is four two and a half inch squares. And you're going to draw diagonal lines on the wrong side of the E squares, the G squares, and the H squares. Okay, now our first step is to make half square triangles and we're going to use the B squares and the G squares to do that. So I have a line drawn on the wrong side of the G squares and we're going to put these right sides together and so a quarter inch away from that drawn line on both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and match up my raw edges and then sew a quarter inch away. Now these are going to be oversized a little bit so I'm going to trim these down after I get them sewn. I'm going to chain piece these together to uh, save some time. It'll help speed things up. Okay, I'm going to cut these apart from the chain and then I'm going to cut down this drawn line. Cut right on that drawn line and that will give me two half square triangles from each set. So we have here a half square triangle and then I'm going to trim these up before I press them. And you can also press them first and then trim them up however you want to do it. But I'm going to use a clearly perfect slotted trimmer and trim them that way and then I'll press. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have all of the half square triangles done. They're trimmed down to two and a half inches square and I have them pressed. And I'm going to take four of these and I'm going to sew an I square to them. So I'm going to take these and what I want is for them to be in this orientation. So I'm going to just lay those right sides together and sew these and I'm going to chain piece all of these. This is what we have. We 
have this. Okay, so I want the C squares and the half square triangles to go this direction. So that triangle kind of faces towards the square. So we're going to go ahead and sew those together. Here's what these look like. Okay, so I'm going to press all of these pieces and then sew them together. Okay, so now I have both sets here and I'm going to sew them together like this so that the triangles are facing towards each other. And I have them pressed so that my seams will nest. So if you want to put pins in there, you certainly can. I'm going to see if I can do this without, but I think maybe I'm going to go ahead and pin. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all of these together and then I'll do the sewing. See if that will make things run a little smoother. So here we have this four patch unit. So I'm going to press these and then we're going to make some flying geese units. Okay, I'm going to make flying geese units with the D rectangles and the H squares. So I have a diagonal line drawn on the wrong side of the squares and I'm going to place these on the rectangles and I'm going to place them on the right side and the drawn line is going to go from the top center to the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to sew directly on that line. I'm going to trim off the outer corner leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I will press those back and then sew the square on to the other side. So here we go and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side only I'm going to go from the center top to the bottom left corner. So we're sewing in that direction. Okay, so there's the completed flying geese unit. Now I need to make another set of flying geese units with the F rectangles and the E square. So I'm going to do the same thing.
Okay. Okay, there is that set of flying gauge units. So now I need to sew these together. And what we're going to do is this flying geese is going to go on the bottom with the goose pointed down and this one is going to go on the top. So we're putting opposite colors together and we're just gonna sew those. Here we go. I'm going to press these and then we're going to make the center square and a square unit. Okay, so now I'm ready to make the center square and a square unit. So I need the A square and then I need four E squares. So these are two and a half inch squares. And I'm going to do this pretty much the same way as a flying geese unit, only there's going to be a square on all four corners but I'm going to do opposite corners first because they're going to overlap here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and sew on this drawn line. And then I'm going to turn it to the opposite side and then sew a square onto this corner by sewing on that drawn line. Okay, and now I need to trim off the corner, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just eyeballing this. You can use your rotary cutter and ruler to do this. And so I have this. So I'm gonna press these back and then I'll sew on a square onto the other two corners. my square and a square unit. So I'm going to press this and then we'll lay out the units and sew them into rows and then we'll sew the rows together. Okay so here are all the pieces. There's my center unit here. I'm going to lay that one down first and then I need the flying geese units to go on each side. So they're going to go with the print flying geese facing. So just lay those all the way around. Then we'll put the half square triangle units in the corners. So now we need to sew them into rows and then sew all the rows together. And we have lots of points to match, seams to match, points to line up. So take your time with this one and pin things together so that they'll go together a little bit more smoothly. So I'm going to start with sewing the first two pieces of each row. I'm going to chain piece those all together and then I'll add the third piece. I'll press all the rows and then sew them together. Now for the first two pieces of this first row, I have the seams pressed in different opposite direction. So you can see on the back this seam is pressed up but this one is pressed down so that will help but I have to match points also. 
I'm going to place a pin through the point of the flying geese unit and then through the four patch unit here. And that will help me line up those points. And so I'll make sure that seam is nested and I'm going to remove that pin and then put it back in and then sew these two pieces together. Press the rows and then I will sew them together. Okay, here's the completed block. So this one is a little bit challenging because you have lots of points to match up. And um, other than that, it's the same units we've been using for the past several months. We've got half square triangles, flying geese units, and square and a square units. So it's, they're just arranged differently. The colors are in different placements. But when you rearrange things, you wind up having points to match. Now my points are not all perfect, but when uh, you look at this overall, you're not gonna see those imperfections. You, you're gonna have to look really close to see them. Um, so to me, this is, this is a good block. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm not going to make any changes other than um, I'm going to square it up before I put it in the quilt. But um, other than that, I think it turned out well. So I hope you'll give this block a try. Okay, that is it for the Indian puzzle block. And I think mine turned out pretty well. Now there's lots of different ways you can make this as far as color placement. So play around with that and make it your own style. And uh, I think you'll enjoy this block. So if you like this video, please click that like button. 
Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.